Hi there, we're going to be analysing the data from the capacitor discharge experiment. We will be aiming to calculate the unknown capacitance of the capacitor. We're going to be using this spreadsheet to help us do the calculations and speed things up for us. We're also going to determine the capacitance by two different methods. The first method is using a log graph, the log of the potential difference versus time. That gives us a straight line. We can use the gradient to determine the capacitance, so we'll be using that method. And then the second method, this is the raw potential difference readings versus time. That will give us an exponential discharge graph. So we'll see an exponential curve here. And we'll be measuring the time constant from the graph in two places and using that to calculate the unknown capacitance. Okay, so let's zoom in on the top here so that we can start putting some data in. Okay, so the, if you remember, the first thing we did was we measured the resistance of the resistor that we were discharging the capacitor through. We took two readings. This will calculate the average for us. So let's put those in there. In fact, they were both 10.60, so no surprises. The average is 10.60. I'm using the built-in average formula for that calculation there. I have surrounded my formulae with if errors. That's another built-in spreadsheet formula. So if it produces, if this part of the formula, the average calculation, if that produces an error, then it will just return a zero. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is the built-in average formula will produce a zero if there's no data there. So it's just to keep things, um, stop big exclamation marks showing up on my spreadsheet. Now we go to the main results table over here and we took readings every 10 seconds down to 150 seconds here. Okay, so time on the left here, I've already inputted those. We only have one set of potential difference readings. I didn't repeat the experiment, but obviously that would be good practice to run the whole experiment again and get a second set of data here so that we can compare. However, I, as you remember, I was using the Picoscope to independently collect the potential difference readings. So actually we'll see how that plot of data compares to our exponential curve. So we'll see that at least. Okay, once again, using the built-in average formula here, and I have put it into an if-error formula. Right, let's put the data in. Okay, so we have our potential readings put in down this column there. So those are the readings that we took, and the average is obviously just mirroring what the first readings were. Okay, so as you would have seen, as I was inputting the potential difference readings here, these values over here were automatically calculating. Let's have a look at those. We are calculating the natural log of the potential difference. The reason that we calculate the natural log is that our starting equation over here is V equals V zero e to the power of minus T over RC. So to perform the inverse function of this e to the power, this exponential here, then what we need to do is take natural logs of both sides of the equation and manipulate it until we have an equation of this format. That's a straight line relationship between log V and t. So that's the reason we're taking the natural log of the potential difference. So let's have a look at that. Once again I'm using an if error to prevent there being an error shown here when there's no data. There is a built-in function ln which is natural log and I'm taking the natural log of the average potential difference here. Uh, if there was an error it would just display a blank rather than a zero, it's not a zero. Uh, so it's a very fairly straightforward formula from the point of view of a spreadsheet. So we have natural logs now calculated. You can see we've got some positives at the top and some negatives down here. We are going to analyze the log graph using this equation. In order to do so, we need to plot the natural log on the y-axis and t on the x-axis. So that when we compare that to y equals mx plus c, 
This will be our y variable, the natural log here, and the t is our x variable. So what that means is that minus 1 divided by rc is our gradient, and the natural log of v0 is the y-intercept. So that once our graph presents those values to us, we know what the gradient is, we know how to determine c from that, and I will show you the calculations for that. So let's have a look at the graph. This is the natural log graph to begin with, since that's the preferred method of calculating c. So there's our graph. It's quite a nice straight line there. All the data plots are close to the straight line of best fit, so that's great. And we have the gradient shown here as minus 0.0179. It's a negative gradient, as you can see. It's going to give us a positive value of rc which it would be weird if it was negative, wouldn't it? And the y intercept is plus 1.7938. Okay, so down here, I have my analysis and evaluation table. So this is calculating the values of interest to us. This is the gradient. For this calculation, I'm using another built-in spreadsheet formula. It's called slope. So you could, of course, manually calculate the gradient, or you could just read the value off here and then enter it into a cell. But spreadsheets have a built-in formula called slope. So that formula, it takes two arguments. It takes your Y data as an array and your X data as an array. What I've done is I've selected all the values of the natural log for my Y data array and all the values of the time for my x data array. I can show you how you would put that in. It's very straightforward. So if I delete both of these arguments here, uh, we can just click. We can click the column letter, and that will input all of the log v values. So that's our y data array. We separate the arguments with a comma, and we click on the, the column letter for our x data. So that's how we use that formula. Okay, so we have the gradient. Now the capacitance is related to the gradient th through the following arrangement. So minus one over RC is equal to the gradient. So that would mean that C is equal to minus one divided by R multiplied by gra the gradient. And what I mean by that is minus one divided by the product of R and the gradient. So let's see that in the cell down here, in the formula here. So I'm calculating minus one, minus one divided by, in brackets, the resistance multiplied by a thousand, multiplied by A2. A2 is the gradient here. Okay, so why did I multiply by a thousand here? The resistance, if you remember, was 10.6 kilo ohms. These values are in kilo ohms here. So I need to multiply by the value of the prefix, the kilo prefix there. And then I've also done a further calculation here. I am presenting this capacitance in microfarads. That's how our capacitors are stated. The manufacturer value of the capacitance is stated in microfarads, so it makes it easier to compare. So I'm multiplying by 10 to the 6 here. That gives us our value of 5,280 microfarads. Okay, uh, this is simply just the number, 4,700 microfarads. That was the manufacturer capacitance. So you can see that we are 12% different here. It's a simple percentage difference calculation. So the difference between your experimental and the expected value and then we divide that by the expected value and I'm just present I've formatted the cell as a percentage but the value that that formula would calculate would be 0 0.12 okay so we're 12% different over here we have the intercept so this is using the built-in intercept formula very similar to the slope formula except you put in your y data array you put in your x data array but obviously this is calculating the intercept instead. Okay, now when we have the intercept, we can calculate 
V0. V0 is E raised to the power of the intercept. Uh, so I use the built-in spreadsheet formula, it's called EXP for exponential. So EXP, and then it takes one argument, what number do you want to raise E to the power of? We want to raise it to the power of that intercept there. And that gives us 6.012. Okay, so we've calculated using the first method, our value of capacitance and done a comparison with the manufacturer value there. We've also got V0, we could compare that to the value that we actually measured, which is 6.12. Great, so we have our first value of the capacitance using method one. Let's move on to method two. And for that, we will be using this graph, which is a plot of the raw potential differences versus time. You can see it gives us that exponential curve. And I've, I've plotted with the spreadsheet an exponential curve of best fit. What we will do with this graph is determine the time constant in two places. We will work out 0.37 of V0. V0 was the, V0 was the initial potential difference reading. And we will, that's this line here. Okay, I'll show you how I calculated that in a moment. And then we will repeat that procedure, but for 0.14 of V0, which is the value of the voltage after two time constants, and we'll read off the graph the time value corresponding to that potential difference. How did I work out the value of 0.37 V0? So I type into here 6.12, which was the initial potential difference reading, and we're just multiplying that by 0 0.3679, sorry. That's the multiple of the initial potential difference to 4SF after one time constant, 0 0.3679. So we multiply that by our initial potential difference there, okay. Now that was 2.25, so this reference line here, I have set that to 2.25. We're going to look to see where that meets the graph. So if we look over here, zoom in a little bit, we can see that it's meeting just one along from where I have my current reference line. So I need to move that to 55 seconds. That, that grid line corresponds to 55 seconds. So let's do that in here. If I select this reference line here, I can change that to 55. Okay, so now it's like a crosshair right on that point there. So that's our first value of the time constant. Let's go down here. This is where I input the time constant here. So 55 in seconds. And we're calculating the capacitance from that time constant. The calculation is as follows. It's the time constant divided by the resistance multiplied by 10,000. The resistance is up here still. You remember that from last time? So it's the average resistance there. I've multiplied it by 1,000 because it's kilo ohms. And then I've multiplied it by 10 to the 6 so that I can present the number in microfarads, just as before. So that's 5,189 microfarads. Okay, uh, compared with the manufacturer C, that is 10% different. Now, we want to do this with two time constants. So, we put our V0 in here. 0 0.14 V0 is 0 0.83 volts. That's this line here, okay? And this one is already lined up, okay? If you zoom in on that, it's forming a crosshair on our curve. So that's 100, and 11 seconds there. We need to input that here. So the procedure is very similar as before, 111. And the capacitance calculated from that, given that it is two time constants, is 5,236 microfarads. So in this calculation, I've got an additional factor of two because I was calculating, this is two time constants here, so I need to divide that by two. 
and then the calculation is the same as before, divide it by the resistance, multiply it by a factor so that it's in microfarads, and that gives us 11.4% difference. Having now calculated two capacitance values using one time constant and two times constants, it would be a good idea to work out an average of those. I haven't done that now, but that would be a, a next step to take. So we have these two methods then that we've used to determine the capacitance. We've used a log graph over here. That enables us to average over a range of time values. So that's a, a good advantage to this method. And the, the, the additional thing that I mentioned earlier that it would have been good to do is get repeat readings for the potential difference so that we can be more confident in the reliability of each of the data blocks. And then over here, we've used the time constant from the exponential graph to determine the value of capacitance. So two different methods. Um, here we're taking off uh, just a couple of readings. Uh, we could obviously do more if we had enough time data so we could measure for three time constants as well. And we can see that actually um, this method has got values that are closer to the manufacturer value of the capacitance compared to this value over here. But from an evaluation perspective, you'd want to look at the methodology and what experimental uncertainty each produces. That's a task for another time. Uh, but I do, if you remember, I did collect data with the Picoscope. That's over here. Okay, so I've got a table of data right here. This is data collected from the Picoscope. Picoscope. So what the Picoscope was doing was collecting samples at time intervals. Okay. So it's got a whole bunch of potential difference values. How many data points we've got there? We've got 24,000 samples. So this is what you get with a data logger. You get lots and lots of data. And so because it, it's handling the simultaneous measurements for you, it's a better method usually. Uh, what I've done here is plotted a graph at the same scale and size as the graph we were using for the exponential readings. So what I'm going to do is put this behind there and we'll see how well our exponential curve compares with these samples. You can see the samples are getting increasingly spread out over here from the Picoscope. But anyway, let's just have a little look, see how that compares. So it should be lined up vertically, which going to line it up horizontally. And that is the comparison. You can see our Picoscope readings are pretty much consistently above the curve here. So uh, we started at a slightly higher value and uh, it stayed pretty much the same. But the shape of the curve is good, which would give us some confidence in the time constant measurements, I think. So yeah, that's just to show how a comparison of the data logger data compared with our exponential curve. Okay, so hopefully you found that helpful, thinking about this experiment from two different methodologies. And I hope that you have a go at doing the data analysis yourself using the worksheet. And all the best with your studies.